Okay, we uh, start up. According to the plan, you are supposed to uh, work with the uh, linear regression equation and you should now begin on the Berger equation. Have you seen Berger equation? Yes? No? You have heard the name Berger? Okay. Today I wanted to play around with uh, one dimensional problem, but compressible. Somebody has said something about these uh, compressible equations should be complex, should be hard to solve. I think that's just a lie. I think they just say it to be interesting or something. So, so we're going to, uh, to solve the 1D Euler equation. <coughs> so uh, no viscosity, but the complete set then also must include, obviously, the uh, continuity. So we have the following uh, sort of recipe. We have time derivative of density and then space derivative of rho times u equals uh, zero. One dimensional continuity and then we have momentum, the Euler equation momentum. The way you have been taught it, I guess, in the basic course, should be something like this. You have u, time derivative, and then you have the convective terms, u du dx. And uh, since it's only 1d, we don't have any, anything else. And then on the other side, we will have something like minus 1 over density, pressure derivative. So uh, that should be the way you have been taught uh, continuity and momentum. And uh, normally in the basic course, it's always more or less incompressible. So here, density is constant. You will have the divergence of the velocity field for incompressible flow. But in general, that would be continuity equation. Density may, may change. The second equation, actually Newton's second law, acceleration equals sum of forces divided by mass here. And here only one force, the pressure, no, gradi no gravity, no viscosity. So uh, that is also covering compressible flows as well. So density here may also change. It's still, still valid equation. But uh, we use that last equation a lot in numerics, but simplifying it. We just neglect the pressure here and set it equal to zero. All of a sudden, here you have a Berger equation. It's a nonlinear equation. We may linearize it if we want to. I mean, you have a function multiplied with a derivative of a function. So that is an equation you are going to play a lot with weeks to come. So, uh, so you, you, you're going to get quite familiar with him. A lot of physics actually uh, it is covered by that one. Now, if you look at uh, these equations in uh, m any numerical textbook, m normally you will see it somewhat differently. You will see it on the form something like this. <coughs> Time derivative of rho velocity and then x derivative of and then rho u square and then equals minus pressure <coughs> gradient. That should be the same equation. They don't look entirely the same. Obviously you have multiplied with the density and then somehow manage to include the density inside both the derivatives here and also this velocity here all of a sudden inside. So what's this? How, how can you do that? 
and why should you? Well, this is normally what we can then call a strong form, a conservative form. You have the gradient in front of something. Very nice when you want to play around with uh, now a volume integral of this uh, equation. You'll have the volume integral of a divergence. Ah, that's beautiful. Then you can use the divergence theory and then rewrite it as a surface integral of not a derivative, but whatever is inside the parenthesis. So that one is widely used when you are talking finite volume and finite element codes, integral codes. So uh, typically people love that version. How can this be the same? Well, if you do the derivation now, <coughs> just a chain rule for this one what do you get well you should get the same not necessarily trivial so like this one you will have rho du dt and then vice versa u d rho dt and here we will have one saying something like uh, what will it be um, rho and then derivative of u that should be something like 2 times u du dx plus and then something like um, what will it be you need one u outside derivative of rho dx yada 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 um, pressure <coughs> And to see that, okay, this one should be equal to this one, you need a little bit more work. But you see the trick? You use the continuity equation. So, uh, like this one, okay, that should cover the first term there. And then you take one of these guys, and then you get the other one. So, uh, and then since the continuity should be fulfilled, okay, then you can remove these two terms. And then divide by the row, and then you should be back to this one. I won't go through it in, in detail. You can have a look for yourself if you're interested. But trust me, it is, it is there. So it's the same equation, just included uh, the continuity. What we also have looked upon is uh, the wave equation and yes you can actually uh, get the wave equation here but then you have to do uh, some trick you have to look at small disturbances you say pressure and density they will have some small variations small perturbation around say a constant value and then uh, a lot of things will simplify and you can join these two together into a wave equation uh, we have looked at the wave uh, equation already. Double derivative with respect to time minus uh, speed of sound squared and then double derivative with respect to space. So I won't go any further into that one. <coughs> what I want to do today is to solve the equations as they are standing. So I want to do this uh, trick. And furthermore, I won't even do this trick. So I rewrite this one as rho du dx plus u d rho dx. That should be the same. So solve these two equations directly as they're standing numerically. Straightforward. The problem, physically, you look at a tube, you want a one-dimensional case. So here I say now this tube is closed at the end. So here I only have one dimension. So although the tube has uh, some extension here in y and z direction, never mind that, I look at a one-dimensional flow. So inside this tube, that goes from 0 to 1. We have uh, initially closed the tube and then we have created a vacuum. We are uh, removing the air inside. 
So I have a quite low pressure, low density inside here. And then in T equals zero, all of a sudden we open. And then the air should, of course, rush into this tube. How? How fast? How will that uh, rush of air actually behave? And what's going to happen on the other end where it is closed? Well, then we should expect to have some high pressure, uh, high density zone here. If you look at our uh, equation system, here the density is unknown, the velocity is unknown, and the pressure is unknown. That's three equations for two unknowns. Ain't that too bad? So we say uh, another equation is needed, and then we do it simple. State the equation, ideal gas law. We say pressure, that's the same as density, uh, the gas constant, and then multiplied with the temperature. The gas constant, not the universal, that's the universal divided by the uh, molar mass for the gas we are looking at. And uh, the temperature must be given absolute in Kelvin. And here I do it simple, I say temperature is constant. Just to make it simple. Then we should have uh, enough. So I can just rewrite this one now. Minus one over density. And then just insert for the pressure. Well, R and T, they should be constants. So they can go up here. And then we have a derivative of density instead, like that. Little messy, we have the unknown density under uh, here in the denominator. So um, that's not so good if he is going zero or negative. But remember, density equal to zero, that is pressure equal to zero physically, that's the lowest pressure you can get. And in practice, hard to get here on, on, uh, on Earth to get absolute vacuum. So uh, they will be a little bit bigger than one in practice. So just have to avoid uh, going all the way down to zero. Then we should be fine. Now, <coughs> how to discretize? We need some choices here. I want to do it as simple as possible. Straightforward, as they are standing. These two equations and Obvious first choice, you use a first order uh, Euler step in time and then you use central space uh, for the for the X derivatives here. An FTCS scheme, straightforward. But we have two equations and they're coupled. So here I have chosen to use a staggered mesh. It's a little more bookkeeping, but it keeps the stencil a little more compact. So uh, I discretize my space, that's okay, from 0 to 1. Then in the center of these uh, cells here, I put the densities here. And I'm going to use a density for the boundary conditions also outside my domain. I'm using ghost cells. So I'm going to need a density here, half a cell away and also here, half a cell on the other side. And he is number one, and this one then number I maximum. <coughs> yep. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. Of course, that was the whole point that I did it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, please remind me when I forget. Uh, so now it hopefully it should be more readable on the video. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, so the density is <coughs> inside uh, the cells in the center. Now the velocities. And then I say, if this one, the ghost cell here, he is number one. The corresponding velocity is to the right, on the face to the right. So here I'll have a velocity number one. 
So here, row one, this one, U1. This one, row number two, here, U number two, and so on. <coughs> then, I'm going to need some uh, a velocity at this point. And uh, it's a question then, don't I need a velocity here as well? Yes, actually I do. So now it's a question, where do my pipe stop? Where is the position one? Well, here I have said the following, when you look at the boundary conditions, you better write that up, boundary conditions, here now, it's very convenient to have a velocity on the wall, because I know it's a solid uh, wall here, so the velocity there has to be zero. So, for the boundary conditions, here, U1 is zero. No problem with him. Then for the density, inside half a cell away from the wall, I have no idea. Then I use the ghost cell and say then, I want the derivative with respect to x in the position 0, meaning here, should be 0. Use a Neumann condition there. And when I have used here a staggered mesh for the density, then it will be a sort of a central uh, scheme for the boundary condition to say 0 derivative at this point, using then uh, the two points half a cell away. So staggered mesh here uh, looks promising. But then what about the other side? Uh, the actual length of the pipe will now be here. So that's a little strange, isn't it? The length then will be, uh, what's the number here? One, we have two, three, four, five, six and a half. So a little bit messy, but uh, I think we can cope with that one. What should the boundary conditions be here? Again, the density in the center here of this cell, that has to then correspond to the density outside the, this uh, tube. So the density for I maximum, well, that has to be the standard value for the density in, uh, in the room. Normal uh, temperature pressure should be around 1.25 kilos per cubic. What about the velocity? Well, there I have no idea. It's going to rush in and then maybe out again, so I don't know. Hence, Neumann condition. I want this one at the position 1 exactly here to be zero. Again, beneficial with the staggered mesh, you have a velocity half a cell on each side. Beautiful to create a derivative in the center point. So using a staggered mesh here well, looks actually quite smart, I think. Any questions so far? The geometry is clear, the problem is clear. That's good. So, of course, we are using air. So then uh, this equation will now read something like rho, uh, gas constant for air, 287, temperature 293 Kelvin or something, if it's 20 degrees, something like that. Should be okay. Okay, discretization. <coughs> I want FTCS schemes for these guys on the mesh I have uh, sketched up there. So, uh, how do we write it? Well, let's write them on the form time derivative equal to and then throw everything else on the other side. Just to make it a little more, more easy. Then this guy, he should read something like this. Rho Center point, new time level, minus the old one, divided by delta t, equals, minus, and then I'm going to need the density. But that's okay. 
I have it. Remember, this is an equation for the density. So now we are focusing on the center point in each cell, on the, on the crosses. So uh, we have the correct location here. And then we need an X derivative. And again, staggered mesh, you know, can, that's just uh, beautiful. So around, uh, say, row number two, you create a derivative at this point by u2 minus u1. So the stencil should read ui minus ui minus 1, um, n, n divided by delta x. Everybody agrees on that one? Straightforward. Uh, sorry, not plus. <coughs> Minus is on the other side now. Then I need a velocity. But remembering, uh, we are focusing on the densities here. I don't have the velocity where I'm uh, looking at uh, one single uh, density. So, so we have to construct a velocity at the location needed. So if we are looking at one uh, density, we can construct one by saying u i plus u i minus 1, and then just take the linear variation there. Sort of an average velocity at the location for the density number i. Multiplied with, and then I need a central space derivative. Here I'm now going to have to go one cell in each direction, one entire cell. So this then has to be something like this, rho i plus 1 minus rho i minus 1 divided by 2 times delta x. There we have it. Everybody agrees? That was equation 1. And the next one, same uh, recipe, ui n plus 1 minus the old one over delta t equals. Now you have to shift your focus half a cell away. Now it's the velocities we are looking at. So here, this term now becomes negative. You need the velocity. Well, that's OK. We are looking at the velocities anyway. And then space derivative, central space. OK, we have to go one cell each direction. So here, ui plus 1, ui minus 1, divided by 2 delta x. And then the last term, which we then write like this. So we have minus rt. Well, here we have a little bit of a pain, don't we? Let's take the spatial derivative first. We are focusing on the velocities. So if you are focusing on, say, u number uh, 2, looking at this point, create a derivative of the densities. Which one do we need? Then we need row number 3 minus row number 2. So here it should read row i plus 1 minus row i divided by one single delta x. That should be a central scheme for the derivative here. Right? Then divide by the density at the point you are looking. Well, that should just be in between those and these two guys. So I can write something like this. 1 divided by rho i plus 1 plus rho i and n divided by 2. There we should have our recipe. <coughs> I believe that one is right. Any questions, objections? No? So it's a, it's a couple problem, but still uh, pure, explicit. 
if you know everything at time level n, we can now write this script on the form the new one equals and then just old values. So it shouldn't be hard to solve at all. Um, we can take this <coughs> delta x and delta t multiply up. Then on all terms you will have delta t by delta x. So that one we can baptize to uh, what should we call him? And r equals delta t by delta x. <coughs> Just for simplicity. Let's try to make a program and see how this one runs. <coughs> So we start as always, clear all, close all, and CLC. <coughs> and then it was the light, you forgot to tell me. <laughs> okay, <coughs> we are going to need uh, some uh, space. But first of all, how many X's do we want here? Let's try, what did I try with? 20 I started with. 20 cells, <coughs> then we can create our, uh, what to do, dx should then be equal to some, uh, what will it be? 1 divided by, and then it's a little bit strange, number of cells minus 1.5, because I have one half a cell sort of uh, addition here for the for special uh, special resolution. I use one here as a length for my uh, domain. So x in meters then goes from zero to one meter. Like that. <coughs> and then it should be possible here to write x <coughs> like a linear uh, space. <coughs> So then it's a question, what should we uh, plot? And here I don't think I want to bother with the velocities. I'm going to focus on the density alone, only looking at the density. So I want the density positions. And they actually start now with minus one half dx, and they go all the way up to one plus half a dx, and I, I have E max number of them. So that should be my uh, my discrete space. A little bit of bookkeeping with these staggered mesh systems, but uh, sometimes it uh, can be convenient. But then you pay the price a little bit with uh, the indexing. But never mind that. <coughs> Uh, we need the constants RT, that was uh, 287 and 293, should be okay. What about, that's also something we're going to need, the speed of sound. What's the speed of sound? Well, there actually you are going to need uh, the gas constant the uh, gamma, sort of the, uh, the ratio between the uh, CP over CV, isn't it? 1.4 for air. So we just hard coded it in directly here, RT. So that should be the speed of sound. We can check it. <coughs> Three hundred and forty three meters per second sounds reasonable. <coughs> then what do we need? <coughs> yeah, we need the unknowns. Rho can then be once E max one <coughs> and then uh, we have to give him a value, initial value. That's why I chose one, not zeros. So we have a vector of our unknowns. 
and then we say initially the density is not 1.25 it is smaller it's uh, say 0 0.5 or something put a zero there that would be absolute vacuum that could be very very dangerous for us since we divide by density so that one of course something we should uh, avoid so we try uh, uh, one half that should be okay not equals but multiply with like that <coughs> I'm going to use an FTCS scheme, finding the new one based on just old values. So clearly I'm also going to need the new densities equals the old ones, like that. So now we have to be careful with, uh, with our boundary conditions here. The last one, Emax, that's not something that we should calculate. <coughs> he should be given. So uh, that one we can specify directly here. Rho Emax equals rho zero. And then we have to specify rho zero somewhere as a constant 1.25. Something like that. Then we have included also the, uh, the Dirichlet condition for the density. <coughs> also included in the new one if necessary. But then we need the velocities. <coughs> and initially, of course, zero. So not a problem there. Here I can use then zeros of Emax and one. <coughs> That also includes the boundary condition for him. The first velocity should always be zero, number one. And that's also something that we are not going to calculate. He's given. No problem with him. <coughs> We're going to need a time step. I have no idea. So we set something. And we need a maximum time. How long should we simulate? Well. <coughs> given that we now know the speed of sound how long time should it take before the information travels when we all of a sudden open this tube well at the fastest he then should go with the speed of sound shouldn't he so if we have a length of one meter and then we have a velocity of uh, given the c here then this should be the necessary time for the signal to reach the end of the tube so we can start with that one. At uh, we can change him later if necessary. Something like that. <coughs> uh, let's make an initial plot. I want the x's and I want the densities. Like that. And we set on a grid. Making it a little bit easier to read, then ah, we can leave it like that. <coughs> then we can start with the uh, main uh, time loop. So for time level n equals 2 all the way up to the ceiling of my maximum time divided by delta t. So we don't have to calculate time explicitly here. We, uh, we don't have any t inside our equation. So it's only, uh, it's only for the marching purposes here that we have to know how far we are going in time. <coughs> then we just start programming. For index, don't the first one. That's the boundary condition. I have to start with 2, and I have to end Emax minus 1. So you can't cal calculate on, on the boundary itself. That's for the boundary conditions to decide. So now we should be able to write something like this. The new row, point 0.1 equals the old one. 
and then we have uh, this equation here. We have multiplied up delta t. Oh, I haven't defined the, this r thing. That's something we have to do. r equals dt by dx. So then the first term should be this one. Then we have the r multiplied with rho of i multiplied with parenthesis. We will then have rho mm, i, no sorry, not rho, it's u. u i minus u i minus 1. <coughs> like that. Then we need uh, the last term. When you, uh, when you uh, get very, very long line, you write period, 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 and then you continue on the next line. Makes it a little bit more readable. So then we need the minus and then a velocity minus what's the velocity that was u i plus u i minus one and then divided by two. Well, I'll wait with the two and then multiply with density. But now i plus 1 minus density i minus 1. i minus 1 finally divided by 4. That should be the recipe, I think. <coughs> yeah, we had 1 half here and we had divided by 2 here as well. So that should be the correct one. Then we do the same with the new u. I haven't made him yet. That's too bad. New u equals u. We need him as well. New velocities of i equals the old one. So now we are on this equation. So we have the same r and uh, all terms will be negative, so we start with r, multiply with, ah, I've forgotten an r up here, haven't I? Yes. Mm, r multiplied with. There we go. Back to the u, r multiplied with, and then the first term. That should then read something like, ui multiplied with parenthesis ui plus 1 minus ui minus 1 and then divide by 2 <coughs> and then we need the final term minus again we have an r you also get delta t over delta x in front of him, multiplied with rt, multiplied with, <coughs> we have uh, the derivatives, that's the difference between rho i plus 1 and rho, rho i plus 1, minus rho i, like that. Then we have this guy, we multiply with 2, multiply with 2, divide by, and then comes the average here, rho i plus 1. <coughs> plus rho i. There we have it. I think. Why doesn't he like this one? You 
use of two dots. I don't have two dots. I have three. One, two, three. I need a space. Yeah, because he thinks it's two point something. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that should be it. That should be it. But now only the inner cells from 2 to i max minus 1. Now for the boundary conditions. For the Dirichlet values, that's not a problem. They were uh, outside the domain, I have the uh, velocity 1, 0 all the time, density maximum equals density 0 all the time. So they are not a problem. Now it's the derivative we have to deal with. So now we have to say something like um, the new, uh, we take the density first, rho. So that was uh, number. Uh, 1 has to be equal the density we have just created number 2 and then the new u of maximum equals the one we have created to the left of him e max minus 1 So they are sort of updated afterwards, but since it's an explicit method, that shouldn't matter. So uh, this one now should be correct. So now the new row and the new u should be the complete new sets. So then we update row equals new row, u equals a new u, and we can plot. plot x comma row and we need a draw now or else he won't bother redoing it also I want a grid on like that A <laughs> little bit messy, yeah. I, <laughs> I think you'll have trouble with that one. Thank you. When I write and do the programming, norm normally what I do is I write the unknown and then automatically I write both parentheses all the time. And then I go one back and put it in inside. So here I go one too far. I like that because, you know, I guess you have uh, experience already in this MATLAB uh, uh, expressions, you can have a lot of parentheses and it's always one missing or one too much and then, then hard to find it. But when you sort of get it in the fingers, whenever you write a parenthesis, you write both of them at the same time. Every time. That actually helps. Uh, there it should be th correct, I think. Anything else? Okay, let's run. So that's the initial state. And then we, uh, the density outside 1.25 and then 0.5 inside the tube, all the way even one half a cell inside. And then he didn't want to do anything. Why not? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Ah, <laughs> what's the maximum time here? Maximum time is smaller than my time step. What do you know? So clearly we are going to need some more zeros here. Yeah, that was a. Uh, not really helpful. I still have a way too big delta t. More zeros. <laughs> ah, that doesn't look too promising. He exploded. More zeros. Exploded. More zeros. Five zeros. Yeah, 
not entirely convincing. Looks like the snake car in the Jungle Book. Even went a little bit too far. You saw here you have zero, and then the boundary condition derivative equal to zero. So he started to lift, and then the wave sort of started to go the other way as well. He should actually have stopped when he hit hit uh, the bottom there, but but obviously a little bit unstable here. So uh, we have to find something else that we do after the break.